Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I wanted to make a video about what I'm calling displacement decals. And the idea behind this workflow is essentially to allow for a decal to affect the nanite tessellated terrain, to push it in and out uh, so that you can add extra detail to your terrain, not just with uh, scattered meshes, which is obviously a great way to do it, but also with decals, right? So in this example here, we have uh, hoof prints and we want those hoof prints to be able to not only be on top of the landscape, but also to be able to push the landscape in. Now, if you've ever tried to use decals alongside displacement, you'll quickly notice that um, it actually doesn't work. Uh, the decal cannot affect the displacement of something else. It can't actually change anything that would affect the scene's depth in any way. A decal cannot affect the displacement, world position offset, opacity, pixel depth offset, any of that stuff of another object in the scene because it is dependent upon the depth read to do its self projection. Uh, so therefore it cannot write in a way that would affect uh, the depth buffer. So then the question is how are these decals doing exactly that? Uh, and the answer is using virtual textures. So in this case I have uh, what I'm effectively calling a displacement decal but it's actually two things. We have a static mesh component, in this case just a plane, uh, which has a material on it, and also we have a decal. And the job of the static mesh, in this case again just a plane, but it could also be a spline or anything else, um, is to write into a virtual texture. So if we look here at um, our virtual drawn virtual textures, you'll see it's being drawn into a displacement virtual texture. And there's a new setting um, for displacement in the virtual textures as well, specifically for this. And uh, you'll see, of course, we have runtime virtual texture volumes uh, for this. I'm not going to make a whole tutorial about how to make virtual textures. There's plenty of information online about how to accomplish that. This is more about how, how to use the materials and the workflows to get this specific result. Uh, but effectively, we have this um, displacement decal material. And all this is doing is sampling a displacement map, uh, modifying it as needed, and then passing it into a runtime virtual texture output. This runtime virtual texture output can then be sampled in the landscape and then blended with whatever other displacement you need to do. So here we have our um, runtime virtual texture being sampled. You can see this is the displacement texture going into our LERP and then into our landscape's final displacement. Um, and then if we look at the decals material, we can see that this is handling the, um, the projection of the base color, the normal roughness and all that business. Now, technically you can write all of this information into the virtual texture output as well and sample it inside the material as well uh, with a second runtime virtual texture sample node. And in fact, I'm actually doing that for um, a mask um, to control the LERP. But the reason why I'm going to argue that you don't want to do that is because you can actually get better resolution from a decal. Um, the runtime virtual texture uh, is basically baking in all of the data from these nodes based off of the resolution that you set for your virtual texture here. So in this case, we've got, you know, a 4096 page table, right? Uh, and so uh, this affects the quality of your projection. And the end result is um, that if you were to do the decal projection inside the virtual texture, uh, it would be lower resolution than just using the decal itself. So in, in this specific case, I argue that uh, we'll only want to use the virtual texture where we have to, uh, such as with the displacement, but I would rather do the rest inside of the, the regular decal workflow, right? So we can project the base color and those other details uh, like we normally would. Um, and that is really all there is to it. Uh, if you have any questions, um, let me know, but thanks for watching and see you next time.